हेलो आई एम मोहम्मद इरशाद स्टडिंग सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इन आई एस एल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज टुडे आई एम हेयर टू डिलीवर ए सेमिनार ऑन हाईवे नेटवर्किंग सिस्टम एज वी ऑल नो दैट हाईवेज आर द ग्रेट मीन्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट विच प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड अदर स्टफ्स आर डन थ्रू ए नेटवर्क ऑफ हाईवेज वी विल लर्न वॉट इज हाईवे नेटवर्किंग सिस्टम एंड सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू इट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल we will see things what we are going to see throughout this seminar introduction and then modern soil stabilization techniques used in highway construction use of fly ash in concrete retaining walls new techniques in pavements advantages and disadvantages let us start with the introduction a highway is a public trans public road especially a major road connecting two or more destinations any interconnected set of highways can be variously referred to as a highway system a highway network or a highway transportation system the history of highways highway engineering gives us an idea about the roads of ancient times roads in rome were constructed in a large scale and it radiated in very many directions helping them in military operations thus they are considered to be the pioneers in road construction the modern roads which we use today by and large follow macadam's construction method use of bituminous concrete and cement concrete are the most important developments various advanced and co- cost effective construction techniques are used development developments of new equipments help in the faster construction of roads many easily and locally available materials are tested in the laboratories and then implemented on roads for making economical and durable pavements scope of transportation system has developed very largely population of the country is increasing day by day the lifestyle of people began to change the need for travel to various modes of transportation like railways and travel by air while above the while the above development in public transport sector was taking place the development in private transport was a was at a much faster rate mainly because of its advantages like accessibility privacy flexibility convenience and comfort this led to the increase in vehicular traffic especially in private transport network so this was the introduction of highway networks now we will move ahead the various techniques used during the construction of highways modern soil stabilizing techniques soil stabilization techniques are necessary to assure adequate subgrade stability especially for weaker or wetter soils it is widely recognized that the selection between the cementous stabilizing agents cement and lime is based on plasticity index of the primary soil type being improved Cement stabilizations offer worldwide availability and ease of application. Bituminous stabilization provides material flexibility and resistance to cracking. Depends on regional availability. Cost of construction is variable. One of the method of soil stabilization is CTB, cement treating base. According to Portland Cement Association, cement treated base has provided economical long lasting pavement foundation. These structures have combined soil and aggregate with cement and water which compacted to high density. In the below figures we can see the unstabilized granular base and cement treated base the difference between both of them. Then we will move towards composition and construction of these type of uh, treated bases the mixture shall be composed of existing subgrade base cores and surface cores materials and an imported soil aggregate with portland cement and water added the materials used in the construction are water and cement and fly ash let us see water used in mixing or curing shall be clean and free from harmful substances like oil salt or other deleterious substances fly ash may be used as a partial replacement for the cement replacement amount not exceeding 25% by weight 
shall be determined through trial batch investigations using the specific materials proposed for the project. Use of fly ash in the concrete. Fly ash is one of the residues generated in combustion and comprises the fine particles that rise with uh, flue gases. Ash which do not rise in ter termed bottom ash. In an industrial context, fly ash usually refers to ash produced during combustion of coal. Retaining walls are also made in highways. Let us see what are retaining walls first of all. A retaining wall is a structure designed and constructed to resist the lateral pressure of soil when there is a desired change in ground elevation that exceeds the angle of repose of the soil. The active pressure increases on the retaining wall proportionally from zero at the upper grade level to a maximum value at the lowest depth of the wall. Types of retaining wall we can see the types of retaining wall that are gravity wall, piling wall, cantilever wall and anchored wall. We can see the differences between the walls. Next we will move towards the new techniques in pavement which we are using nowadays. First one is asphalt chip seals. Second one is asphalt emulsion seal coats. Third one is asphalt slurry seals and the last is asphalt surface coating. Next we will move towards the advantages of highway networking system. Less capacity outlay. Road transport required much less capital investment as compared to other modes of transport such as railways and air transport. The cost of constructing, operating and maintaining roads is cheaper than the railways and airways. Door to door service. The outstanding advantage of road transport is that it provides door to door or warehouse to warehouse service. This reduces cartage, loading and unloading expenses. Service in rural areas. Road transport is most suited for carrying goods and people to and from rural areas which are not served by rail, water or air transport. Exchange of goods between large towns and small villages is made possible only through road transport. Flexible service. Road transport has a great advantage over other modes of transport for its flexible service. Suitable for short distance. It is more economic and quicker for carrying goods and people over short distances. Lesser risk of damage in transit. As the intermediate loading and handling is avoided, there is lesser risk of damage, breakage, etc. of goods in transit. Thus, road transport is most suited for transporting delicate goods like china ware and glassware, which are likely to be damaged in the process of loading and unloading. Next one is saving in packing cost. As compared to other modes of transport, the process of packing in motor transports is less complicated. Goods transported by motor transport require less packing or no packing in several cases. Rapid speed. If the goods are to be sent immediately or quickly, motor transport is more suitable than the railways or water transport. Less cost. Road transport not only requires less initial capital investment, the cost of operation and maintenance is also comparatively less. Private owned vehicles. Another advantage of road transport is that big businessmen can afford to have their own motor vehicles and initiate their own road services to market their products without causing any delay. Last one is feeder to other modes of transport. The movement of goods begins and ultimately ends by making use of roads. Road and motor transport act as a feeder to other modes of transport such as railways, ships and airways. Now we will move towards the disadvantages of highway networking system. In spite of various merits, road or motor has some serious limitations. First one is seasonal nature. Motor transport is not as reliable as rail transport. During rainy or floody season, roads become unfit and unsafe for use. Next one is accidents and breakdowns. There are more chances of accidents and breakdowns in case of motor transport. Thus, motor transport is not as safe as rail transport. Next one, 
unsuitable for long distance and bulky traffic this mode of transport is unsuitable and costly for transporting cheap and bulky goods over long distances next one is slow speed the speed of motor transport is comparatively slow and limited lack of organization the road transport is comparatively less organized more often it is irregular and undependable the rates charged for transportation and also unsuitable and unequal these were the disadvantages of the highway networking system let us see the conclusions traditionally highways were used by the people on foot or on horses later they also accommodated carriages bicycles and eventually motor cars fa facilitated by advancement in road constructions in the in the 1920s and 1930s many nations began investing heavily in progressively more modern highway networking systems to spur commerce and bolster national defense now i will take your leave thank you